U2's Bono says that music can change the world because it can change people. So today I want to share with you some thoughts on the transformative power of music. Music for me has always been an important part of my life. I remember as a very young child learning to play piano, sitting next to my grandma Susie in front of her ancient upright piano. I ended up having 10 years of real piano lessons as well, and I studied and played clarinet in band and orchestra for way more years than I care to remember. Um, so music, in short, music for me is life. Uh, my first exposure to music therapy, as Amber mentioned, came about this time last year. My father, who was in hospice care, had been assigned a music therapist as part of his treatment. And Emily, his therapist, became literally one of my favorite people on earth. I arrived, Dad had been on hospice for about a month when I arrived for an extended stay. And the first week I was there, he told Emily, don't come, my daughter's here, I'm busy, don't come. So the second week I said, Dad, let's just do the regular schedule um, because, I mean, I love music too. And plus, I have to admit, I was a little curious because the music therapy was the only part of hospice that he did not complain about. <laughs> so Emily came the next week on Tuesday as normal, and she pulls out her guitar, she pulls out her sheet music on an electronic tablet, very fancy, and she starts to sing and play. She mostly does gospel songs, which made perfect sense. My father, in later in his life, had really become involved with music ministry at his tiny, tiny little church. And in fact, even after he became ill, he would sometimes still lead the singing on Sundays with his oxygen tank in tow. Eh, it worked. Um, so... So Emily mostly chose, you know, classic gospel songs, and I witnessed something magical that day because my dad, who had grown pretty depressed and lonely because, you know, hospice is kind of depressing, right? So as she sang, though, he joined in. His voice was very weak at first, but as they sang more and more, it got stronger and stronger. He scooted up to the front of his chair, and I watched his little foot start beating time to the music, and he broke out into this smile like I hadn't seen in a very, very long time. I myself got sucked in because I started singing hymns that, quite frankly, I didn't know I remembered um, from a very, very long time ago, and tears were rolling down my face because that's just the way I am. But I broke into laughter because apparently every time Emily ended the therapy session, Dad would request, of all things, 16 tons. <laughs> that stopped me from crying. <laughs> so on May 24th, 2018, Dad's hospice nurse came by right after dawn. We had had a horrible, horrible night. Dad had had a really rough time. And she explained to me that it's probably only going to be a matter of hours until he was gone. So I called his church family, and we gathered around him. Um, Gypsy, with whom he often sang and played in the church, she came, held his hand, sang to him. And you could tell he felt soothed. I mean, he wasn't really responding, but you could see that he, that he was soothed by it. A little later, Emily called me and asked if she could come over. The nurse had told her what was going on, and she really wanted to sing for my dad one last time. So I said yes, and she really provided therapy for all of us that day. Um, she came, she sang, we all gathered around, and it was only maybe 15, 20 minutes after she left that I watched as my dad slowly took one final breath. And I knew that the music had really helped with his transition from this life to the next. So music has power for all of us. After that, I really started learning more about music therapy as an entity. 
It was interesting to me that the term music therapy first appeared in 1789 in a a journal called Columbian Magazine. There was an article entitled Music Physically Considered about an old dancing master who had long languished, I love 1789 language, right? Um, Who had long languished under a nervous fever and had been rendered completely unable to talk and communicate even basic desires and needs. So one day, his former fiddle player came over to visit, and he noticed that the patient was looking wistfully up at a violin that was hanging up on the wall. So, as fiddle players will do, he took that fiddle down and started to play, and sure enough, the man started showing real signs of life again. By the end of it, he was even able to speak and to thank the guy for coming and playing that music for him, which I think is really magical. The American Music Therapy Association provides a lot of information on official music therapy, including how people become music therapists. So you study actual music therapy. There are over 70 programs in the U.S. that are certified, and official music therapists will earn a bachelor's degree or higher in music therapy. They serve a wide variety of populations. Military personnel, for example. People on the autism spectrum benefit from music therapy. Alzheimer's patients and even incarcerated populations are served by music therapy. In fact, I was struck by the diversity where you can see a young child who's experienced trauma benefit from this therapy and someone who's in prison have chances at creativity and socialization that they would not ordinarily have. The AMTA formed a music therapy relief effort in New York City after 9-11. And they quoted this one fourth grader, and I loved the way she put this. She said, thank you for helping me learn about everything. I appreciate that you taught me how to cool down when I was mad. We can all use that, right? Um, There's a chaplain at a correctional facility in Colorado who talks about how Corrections, music therapy and corrections is definitely not some kind of undocumented fad. It really does work, and it creates a positive change in a very negative environment. In 2015, ABC News named all music therapists everywhere, kind of a big group, um, as their people of the week, which I thought was kind of interesting. They did this in reaction to U.S. Representative Gabby Gifford's story. You may remember she was shot in 2011, and she had been rendered unable to talk. However, music therapy restored her ability to speak, which is pretty amazing, I think. Um, Susan Hanser, who is a professor of music at Berkeley, um, talks about all the benefits of pain management and music therapy working together, including something as simple as just distracting the patient, right? Um, But also, aiding in rhythmic breathing, and helping relax tension. Most of all, just getting some enjoyment back in your life um, is where that comes in handy. I can personally attest to the healing power of music. You see, I suffer from depression, and I have always found music helps me to regulate my moods. Um, I often find myself using music to deal with sadness, with anxiety, and even with anger. At first, I was a little bit worried that I was maybe overusing music and just using it to uh, experience bad feelings or amplify them. Um, But recently, my therapist said, no, it's okay. So I'm going to go with that. I've been using music since I was a young child. One of my favorite memories of elementary school is that every year my school held an assembly at Christmas. We all gathered as a community to sing Christmas carols, and I remember feeling so warm and welcome and loved in those moments. My father and I always attended our yearly um, father-daughter banquet for my campfire troop, and I can remember all the dads singing Let Me Call You Sweetheart to us, and You Are My Sunshine. I mean, you know, what? who doesn't like feeling like somebody's sunshine, right? It's a good thing. So I've always enjoyed that. In high school, <laughs> I didn't know I was depressed yet in high school, but my two best friends and I would drive around town singing 
Love Stinks by the Jay, Jay Giles Band at the top of our lungs because we were convinced that we were going to die single. In my case, that might still happen. But so after I learned I was depressed, I really started using music in a more, um, in a more specific way. For example, when I'm feeling super angry, I'll get in the car and I will put on Limp Biscuits break stuff or some, some rage against the machine and I will just drive and scream and at the end I feel better because it helps me live the moment and then move past it. Another great example is that long lost love thing with the undateable whatever, right? So if I'm feeling wistful about my former love and I am worried that I will never, ever find another love like Mark Lauderdale. <sighs> I put on Janis Joplin, right? And I, I cry my eyes out while she sings of her lost Bobby McGee. I would trade all of my tomorrows for one single yesterday to be holding Bobby's body close to mine. <sighs> yeah, it works. So as it turns out, I have been my own music therapist for most of my life, and you can too. It even works for happy things, oddly enough. Um, a couple of years ago, I decided that I really probably should get off the couch and start moving because, you know, as we get older. Um, and so I started doing Disney 5Ks. I'm doing a third one next Friday, so keep me in your prayers next week at the same time. Uh, and I find that... Using music to help with exercise and, and fitness is, is perfect. I cannot walk slow when I am belting out some Beyonce, right? I just can't do it. Um, so it really helps with those kinds of things as well. Um, so what I want to challenge you guys to do today is to become your own music therapist. Listen to music. Sing it. Even if you can't sing, it doesn't matter right? Um, put on your own car concerts. I find myself to be the best singer in the whole world when I'm driving. Like, I, some of you have that. Okay. Um, one of the things that, that I love to do, and I, I, I challenge you to do this, put on Bohemian Rhapsody, <laughs> right? You cannot help but feel a little bit better about everything with a tiny bit of head banging and some scaramouche, scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Yeah, yeah. Play the sad song when you need it, absolutely. It's good for you. But as soon as you're done feeling your feelings, crank up some pink or some Aretha Franklin right? And rock out and elevate yourself. So in closing, I'd just like to point out that music, the more you can get it into your soul, the more your soul will sing. Thank you.